Good afternoon, and welcome to Facebook Live with Holy Cross Health. My name is Nancy Nagel, and I'm a registered nurse and the Vice President of Women and Children's Services at Holy Cross Hospital. For those of you joining us today on Facebook, we thank you for being here and for taking an active role in your health and the health of your baby. We at Holy Cross are happy to be your partner in your health journey. Last year, more than 10,000 babies were born at Holy Cross Health's two hospitals, Holy Cross Hospital and Holy Cross Germantown Hospital, more in Maryland than any other health system. Holy Cross Hospital delivers more babies and cares for more newborns with complex medical issues than any other hospital in Maryland or the District of Columbia and is one of the largest single-site hospital providers of obstetrical services in the Mid-Atlantic region. That same quality of maternity services is available at Holy Cross Germantown Hospital, expanding access to this outstanding maternal and neonatal commitment, skill, and expertise for which Holy Cross Health is known. Today, we're here with Dr. Janelle Hino, Chief of Neonatology at Holy Cross Health, and Dr. Juliet Prust, Chair of Obstetrics and Gynecology at Holy Cross Hospital. We'll begin with the topic of pregnancy and a question for Dr. Proust. If someone just found out they're pregnant, when should they begin prenatal care? So women should begin prenatal care when they first find out they're pregnant. Usually that first visit will include just a blood work and counseling to ensure the viability of the pregnancy. And then usually we start with obstetric care at around eight weeks with the first ultrasound. Thank you. And what are some of the important things to know before selecting an OBGYN? The first and foremost is that it's covered by your insurance, so you're always connecting with your insurance company, make sure that you're in network. Also, um, making sure that they deliver at the hospital um, of your choosing, whether that's because of location or access to um, NICU and um, advanced ability, capability of the obstetric department. And then finally, just um, philosophy of the OB providers, which hopefully you've had a chance to meet them before you're actually pregnant. And why is it important to continue to receive prenatal care throughout the pregnancy? It's important to receive prenatal care throughout the pregnancy because even in young, healthy women, health issues can arise because of the pregnancy, the most common being gestational diabetes and high blood pressure. These can pop, out, pop up out of the blue and often without any notice. And Dr. Prust, what should new mothers expect during that first prenatal visit? During the first prenatal visit, it's a lot of counseling and a lot of blood work. So you usually get an ultrasound to confirm dating, make sure everything looks good. And then afterwards, um, we do a routine blood work that includes checking blood count, blood type, immunity to various viruses, and offer genetic testing such as um, Down syndrome screening. And then finally, we do a lot of counseling about lifestyle during pregnancy and what to expect over the next nine months. That helps to hear about the screening and tests that would happen throughout a pregnancy. And Dr. Hino, are there support services available when some of these tests might reveal a difficult diagnosis? Yes, so we work very closely with the obstetricians and the special uh, specialist obstetricians called maternal fetal um, medicine physicians. We get uh, reports from them discussing when the baby will be born, what the issues are, what to expect. Sometimes you, know, you might be sent to the fetal medicine um, clinic at Children's National Medical Center in Washington. We work closely with those specialists. They'll tell us what to expect at the delivery, what type of tests need to be done after delivery, and then once again, if we need to transport the baby to a higher level facility. And Dr. Hino, how do you and the OB communicate um, either before the baby's born or, or at time of delivery? It can be as simple as a phone call. The obstetrician might tell us that someone has come in that has an issue and they're going to deliver in the next several hours, in the next several days. They might send us a report. We might get ultrasounds. We might get reports from, like I said, the maternal fetal medicine physicians. Uh, we have a very close uh, relationship with all specialists at Children's Hospital. They let us know what to expect 
and how to handle it once the baby's born. And getting back to when um, often or sometimes a test might reveal a difficult diagnosis, I understand there's a program called the Never Alone Program at Holy Cross Hospital? Yes, the Never Alone Program is a unique program here at Holy Cross. Sometimes uh, babies are, have congenital problems, they might have a genetic issue, they might have a complex heart disease that the baby will not survive once the baby's born. So we meet with the families beforehand. We discuss what are the wishes of the family. Would the baby, would they like their baby to go into home hospice? Would they like their baby to stay in hospital hospice? It's just a very unique program that allows the baby to stay with the parents in the hospital. And to, in order to get respite care while they're in the hospital, the baby can go back into the NICU and um, the family can spend as much time as they'd like with the baby. Thank you. And while we're still on the topic of prenatal care, Dr. Prest, what would make a pregnancy a high-risk pregnancy? So high-risk pregnancy spans several you know, different severities from just advanced maternal age, which is any woman over the age of 35, which is the most common um, high-risk pregnancy. Other common things would be high, high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, um, and then a variety of different autoimmune diseases like thyroid disease. And when is it time for a woman to see a specialist? So that depends on severity of uh, the high risk or the nature of the high risk pregnancy. You know, a specialist can be a visit with a specialist can be as simple as just doing first trimester screening, which is testing for Down syndrome. Um, with women with chronic illnesses, uh, we usually have a woman see a, a specialist, the maternal female medicine doctor, with, within the first. Um, trimester or early second trimester, and then periodically throughout. The maternal fetal medicine specialists can consult as an outpatient. They can also consult inpatient if you happen to be hospitalized for any reason. And they're also able to do um, diagnostic ultrasounds in our perinatal diagnostic suite, which we have in the hospital on labor and delivery. So in addition to the Perinatal Diagnostic Center, or PDC, I know that at Holy Cross Hospital, there's a high-risk perinatal center, or HRPC unit. What type of patient would be there? So the typical type of patient who might be admitted to the hospital is somebody with either um, newly diagnosed high blood pressure or uncontrolled high blood pressure or preeclampsia, somebody who has uncontrolled diabetes, or um, also very often we admit people who have evidence of preterm labor or preterm contractions. And I know that Holy Cross does have parenting classes and childbirth classes that are offered online, but what else can women do just to promote a healthy pregnancy? So the first and foremost is just have, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, balanced diet and exercise, um, you know, avoiding things like alcohol, nicotine, and then especially in this day and age, vaccination. So COVID vaccine, flu vaccine, and then whooping cough vaccine are the three vaccines that we really recommend to pregnancy. And Dr. Heino, speaking from the baby's viewpoint, anything to add to that in terms of a healthy pregnancy, healthy baby? I would say to listen to your obstetrician and do exactly uh, what we've just talked about. A healthy lifestyle leads to a healthy baby. And, and a question for both of you, how can women stay safe during COVID? So first and foremost, vaccine. Um, you know, CDC just put out a statement saying that pregnant women who are unvaccinated are twice as more likely to be hospitalized or admitted to the ICU and have a 70% higher risk of death. Um, we also know that there's increased risk of preeclampsia and um, uh, stillbirth with women who have had um, COVID and then also babies born to moms who have preeclampsia have a higher risk of NICU admission. So getting that vaccine is absolutely the most important thing. Dr. Heino, if I have a baby and I am COVID positive, will I be able to see the baby after I deliver? Yes, you will, of course. The baby will be allowed to stay with you. We'll ask that you have a, a little extra precautions we might ask for you to wear a mask while you're with the baby, strict hand washing, uh, but yes, the baby can stay with you. And back to Dr. Prust, when should I call my OBGYN? What signs and symptoms? 
So the most common signs and symptoms of labor are regular contractions that are painful um, and have lasted more than a couple hours. If you think your water's broken, um, heavy bleeding, baby's not moving like normal, or um, if you have high blood pressure issues, there's a variety of different signs and symptoms your OBGYN would have talked to you about. Do you advise taking a prenatal tour prior to delivery? It's always great to take a prenatal tour just to get comfortable with the hospital and the surroundings. Obviously, right now during COVID, there are not in-person tours like there used to be, but Holy Cross does offer a virtual tour, and a lot of doctor's offices will also have kind of virtual tours as well. Um, you know, the good thing to know about Holy Cross is that your HRP or antenatal room um, labor room and postpartum rooms are all private, um, and um, we have 24-hour-a-day access to anesthesia as well as the neonatologists. And what should I pack to bring to the hospital? Really, we'll, we'll provide you with everything you need. Um, I usually tell people, pack things to entertain yourself because the labor can take a long time, um, and for a postpartum period, just things to be comfortable in, and then Pillows are the highest premium, so I always tell people to bring a, a comfy pillow. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Dr. Heine, what are some things to think about when selecting a pediatrician for baby? I cannot stress the importance of having a pediatrician before you deliver your baby. You're going to take this little person home, and you might have concerns or questions, and you need to have someone you can call, especially in the middle of the night. I would suggest that you get a pediatrician before your 35th week of pregnancy. That way you have someone in place and someone to call once you go home with this baby. Some things that people look for in a pediatrician, they want to know uh, how many pediatricians are in the group. Some people like a lot of pediatricians in a group. Some people only want two or three. I would start asking my friends, family members, who they use as a pediatrician and why they use them. Some people like a pediatrician within a certain radius, five or 10 minute drive. Start looking at pediatricians in your neighborhood. Uh, most pediatricians have a way to discuss their practice. They might do it online, they might do it uh, on the phone, they might have a virtual tour. Um, come up with a list of questions that are important for you. Do you have Saturday hours? Uh, how do I reach you after hours? What type of callback system do you have? These are all important questions when you're choosing a pediatrician. But the most important thing is to have that pediatrician before you deliver. Thank you. And Dr. Prust, should I pre-register for my delivery? Ideally, everyone would pre-register. It just streamlines the um, admission process, especially if you're in labor. You don't want to be asked, answering a ton of questions on admission. Um, and you can do that as early as the beginning of the third trimester. Thank you. Now, we're going to move on to labor and delivery. I'm in active labor. What should I do next? Call your doctor. So every <laughs> practice has an on-call physician 24 hours a day. So usually your doctor will have given you the number. It's often the same number as um, the office hours during the day. And the on-call physician will call you back to discuss whether or not you need to come to the hospital, come to the office, or you should stay home for a little while. And at Holy Cross Hospital and Holy Cross Germantown Hospital, are mothers tested for COVID on admission? So every mother is tested for COVID on admission. Um, even if you test positive, that doesn't mean anything will change. Your partner can still be with you, um, and your baby will, like what Dr. Heino said before, your, your baby will be able to remain with you as well. And in terms of any discomfort or pain with labor, what options are available to our mothers? So in early labor, um, obviously there's natural ways of treating pain, being able to ambulate, walk around the room, um, sit on a birthing ball. We do have um, IV pain medicine that's available to you in early labor. Once you're in more active labor, it's limited to um, epidural uh, pain management because that doesn't affect the baby. We do, like I said, we do have an anesthesiologist available 24-7 to if you want, when you decide that you want that epidural. And if a mother had a cesarean section during her last pregnancy, would she be able to deliver vaginally with this one? So there's a number of factors that we take into account. One is the type of C-section that they had before. The most common is something called a low transverse C-section, which um, is safe to ha try, have, have a trial of labor after a C-section. Another type of C-section is something called a classical C-section, which is usually reserved for very premature births. 
if you had a classical C-section in your previous pregnancy, regardless of when it occurred, you are no longer a candidate for a vaginal delivery. If you did have that low transfer C-section, you would be allowed to have a trial of labor if you went into spontaneous labor on your own. We can't induce women with previous C-sections because of the risks associated with the scar breaking open. And are there any complications um, that, that you see during labor and delivery? So the most common complications are either what we call failure to progress, where the cervix stops dilating. There are many different tools that we can use to try and augment labor, meaning that trying to get the cervix to dilate more, such as breaking water, starting a medicine called Pitocin, um, moving the patient around to try and um, change the baby's position. Uh, the other complications are what we call uh, non reassuring fetal heart tracing, where the fetus is not tolerating labor. Again, there's multiple interventions that we can um, provide to the patient. And then finally, um, bleeding is the other common complication. With all of those, we try many interventions to try and um, allow for the patient to deliver vaginally. But ultimately, if we can't resolve them, then we do, offer, we do go to C-section. Thank you. And now I'm going to turn back over to Dr. Hino. The baby has arrived. Congratulations. What screening tests are performed on newborns? Well, screening tests start at one minute of age, actually, Nancy. We do something called the APGAR score, which is done at one minute and five minutes of age. It looks at five different parameters of the a newly born infant. It lets everyone know how the baby uh, tolerated labor and delivery. The second uh, test that is done is done at 24 hours of age. It's called a CCHD screening. That stands for Critical Congenital Heart Disease. It's a simple test. It uh, looks to see, it screens the baby to see if they've had any issues with their uh, heart. So they just take something called the pulse oximeter, and they play, which is really just a Band-Aid with a light on it, and they place it on the right hand, and you get a reading of the oxygen level in the right hand. And they do the same thing for the foot, looking at the oxygen level in the blood on the foot. They compare the two, and if there's a discrepancy between those readings, then the baby fails the screen, and they get a, a simple ultrasound of the heart to look for issues. Thank you. Will I be able to have visitors during COVID-19? So now that the rates of COVID have plateaued, or at least stayed stable in the Maryland region, you can have visitors. So on labor and delivery, you can have um, two support people and a doula if that's your desire. On the postpartum floor, you can have your um, one support person be with you um, 24 hours, and then there are visiting hours in the afternoon for other family members. So if I have other children? So the age restriction for um, children is, I believe, 12 years old right now. Um, but And so unfortunately, young children are still asked to stay out of the hospital because of concerns for um, flu, COVID, RSV, other types of upper respiratory illnesses. And Dr. Heino, back to you. Why is breastfeeding important? Well, we feel that breastfeeding is very important. Breast is best. Um, in the initial part of breastfeeding, the mother produces something called colostrum, which is full of her antibodies. It protects the baby against infection. Uh, it, it promotes bonding with the mother. Um, breast milk actually changes as the baby ages and um, uh, promotes good health and good weight gain for the baby. Here at Holy Cross, we have several programs in place. We have lactation consultants. We have a breast pump program that you can rent breast pump if needed. Um, in the NICU, we have uh, lactation consultants who only work with our parents in the NICU, and uh, we just do everything we can to support breastfeeding. And Dr. Heino, for babies that are born with medical problems at Holy Cross Hospital and Holy Cross Germantown, what services are available? Well, we have two levels of NICU here. Um, the first level of NICU is our level two NICU at Germantown. These levels are mandated by the state actually, but the, uh, the real difference is at Germantown, you, babies can stay there if they're 32 weeks and above, uh, if you've gotten to your 32 uh, weeks of gestation, and they have to be a certain weight. It's about it's 1,500 grams, which is about three pounds, four ounces. At Holy Cross Silver Spring, we're a level three NICU. And level three NICUs 
handle all complex medical issues with newborns, from the very smallest premature babies who might stay with us for months, all the way up to full-term babies who might just stay with us for a couple of days. And Dr. Heino, if my baby were to be transferred from Holy Cross Germantown Hospital to Holy Cross Hospital, how is that done and who does it? Well, if you have a baby who delivers at Germantown Hospital who's under 32 weeks or may need just a little higher level of care, we have an ambulance service here that we uh, staff. We send out a neonatologist, uh, a nurse who is specialized in um, NICU care, and a respiratory therapist. We go in the ambulance, we pick up the baby, and we bring the baby back. And when my baby um, is big enough to go back to Germantown, can that happen? Absolutely. Once the baby gets over 32 weeks and over a certain weight, or the baby becomes more stable, we go back in the ambulance and take them back to Germantown. And if I live a distance from the hospital, but I wanted to deliver here, and my baby is in the NICU, I can't get here, how can I see the baby? All babies in the NICU have something called NICU cameras over them. You will be given the opportunity to um, have a website that you can go to that you can see the baby 24-7. Um, Dr. Prust, back to the maternity partnership program that I know Holy Cross Hospital has. What makes it so unique? So it's unique in that it allows for women who um, may not have insurance or may not be able to get access to care elsewhere. It allows them to be able to get um, excellent prenatal care throughout the duration of their pregnancy. They have access to all the same tests and um, ultrasounds and um, high-risk doctors that somebody um, who's getting prenatal care out of the community would. So for any mother in need, regardless of, of their ability to pay, what makes Holy Cross Health's maternity program and neonatal so unique? So we, um, regardless of their ability to pay, women can get prenatal care from early on until the end, end of um, their delivery. Um, they're, they have access to maternal female medicine doctors. They have access to um, OBGYNs throughout their pregnancy. They um, can have a consult with the neonatologist if need be, and then they also um, get their ultrasounds done in the perinatal diagnostic center, which allows for maternal fetal medicine doctor to evaluate the patient and the baby. And Dr. Heino, you mentioned the CCHD or congenital cardiac um, screening program. What other resources are available to either hospital through our affiliations, either through um, teaching programs, medical schools, et cetera? Well, we work very closely with Children's National Medical Center. We work very closely with all of the consultants there. Um, we have residents, pediatric residents, who are in their training to become a pediatrician who come through our NICU. Um, and we work closely with uh, uh, other uh, facilities and other academic centers in our training of respiratory therapists as well as nurses. And if someone is interested in learning more about either maternity care or newborn care here at Holy Cross, who can they contact or reach out to? And they can go to holycrosshealth.org, um, and that provides a variety of different information. Um, it, it will also give you the information if you are somebody who in need of our maternity services um, or the OBGYN clinic. Um, additionally, you can reach out to um, any of the nursing administrators um, or ourselves. Thank you. Do we have any questions from our audience? Anything else from our doctors just to um, summarize before we start to wrap up? Um, all I would say is that, like we said before, getting prenatal care early and often is critical to a healthy mom and a healthy baby. Even when um, you're young, you're healthy, things can arise, um, and making sure that we may do routine ultrasounds, routine visits, um, will allow you to have the best possible outcome. And again, get vaccinated. Thank you. Also, if you're having a high-risk pregnancy or if your baby has been diagnosed with having an issue, talk to your OB about getting a consult from one of the neonatologists. We'll be happy to sit down with you virtually, um, on the phone, 
and discuss uh, what to expect when the baby is born. Um, sometimes the hardest part is the uh, unknown, and we can allay some of your fears. Thank you, both of you. Let me just check and see if we have any other questions out there. Well, we're about out of time, so I do want to thank everyone for tuning in today. If we didn't get to your question, we will provide additional information through Holy Cross Health's blog, or we can connect with you on one or more um, of our maternity services channels, whether that's by phone or via website. So do connect with us to learn more about our maternity services. Again, you can visit holycrosshealth.org slash maternity, or you're welcome to call me. And again, I'm Nancy Nagel, and I'm at nageln at holycrosshealth.org. We thank you again today for joining us on Facebook Live with Holy Cross Health, and we hope to see you here again soon.